Hello and welcome to video 7 of the series. Um, last time we did, had a look at how to decode the team transfer frame. Um, for this session, um, I want to go a step back before decoding the team transfer frame, namely the CRC check of the frame. And um, we will also have a look at how to directly call C++ code from within Haskell. So let's start. So we have the steam transfer frame and as you know, uh, this last value and we had here was the frame CRC. Actually, um, the CRC in this case should be checked before the frame is passed. So um, I want to remove it for now. And also from the parser. So uh, the CRC check itself will operate on the binary data only. And um, so uh, we have a look here at uh, this is the encoding procedure. Um, so here is described how this uh, CRC check works. So this is a polynomial CRC check. So you have here the polynom and then how it is calculated and so on. So this is all very complicated and uh, stuff. But um, fortunately, uh, I already have an implementation, but it is in C++. So uh, first step I want to do is uh, to translate this C++ version into Haskell, but then also to verify that it works correctly, test it against the C++ version. So this is the task for today. So let's go back and um, let's create a new file for the CRC. Um, basically what we want is a function which calculates a CSC for a byte string and returns a word 16. For now we let it undefined. And also um, a check CSC function which takes this byte string and returns a bool. So this check CSC expects um, that the last two bytes in this byte string will be then the CRC. Um, yeah. Okay, also just let's quickly export them. So, and now let's have a look how we would do this in um, how the C++ code looks like. So let me just quickly copy that and uh, yeah, let's put it here. So um, this is a lot of shifts and operations and so on. So um, to 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 better um, to make this a little bit faster, there is a lookup table as you see here. Um, the CRC table, so this contains for every byte value uh, a 16 bit value, and um, the algorithm itself is, 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 is this one. So, this is um, so it's quite short. So, it gets a slice, um, a slice is just the, um, the pointer and the length, um, which provides then iterators in C. So, if you don't know C, yeah. It's not that important, it's just the pointer and the size. Um, so that you can uh, use this uh, newer style for loop uh, um, on this slice here. Yeah. So basically uh, this is an initial value on the CRC. Then it loops over this um, over this whole area as in the binary data themselves. This is in uint 8t, which is a word 8 in Haskell and uh, then calculates the CRC with this formula uh, incrementally and then uh, casts it back to a 16-bit integer at the masked value. So it takes the lower 16-bit and um, makes a binary and it casts it and returns it. And this is what we get here. So uh, let's do this first. Um, so we want to then to translate this. So now for now, comment out the code. First thing is to to 
translate this table to Haskell, which is um, which should be quite easy. So we will need import and we need to import this qualified. So vector is the go-to array implementation in, in Haskell and unboxed means that it's um, that the values will be directly stored in the array. If you have a boxed vector then you can have any type but it's just a pointer to um, to the other data and the uh, unboxed will directly contain the values. Uh, this is only possible for uh, types which can be unboxed. So, um, Okay, so then we also call this CRC table which is of type we vector and this is a word 16. Yes, these are 16 bit values. Yeah, you see here, so UNT 16, C++ is this word 16. And we just take it from a list. So we assume this is a list. Uh, oops. So close this. Uh, this one. And um, okay, we add this file to the library. And then we can start GHCRD. And it compiles, it says uh, value not used. Yeah, so this is a larger table, and um, so to avoid much scrolling, I just move it down here. Yeah, in C, you often cannot do that because uh, well, if you use values, they have to be defined before, but in Haskell, we can move them as we like. So, um, next thing is this is the calc CRC function in C, and we want to have the same in Haskell. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look. So basically we loop over the whole over the complete byte string. And um, so this is basically a fold. Yeah. So um, we get a byte string. And what we do is uh, fold. And if you have something like a loop, you can always imagine this is a left fold. So we fold L and um, we get the prime. So to get we get the strict version. Uh, some kind of function f over uh, so we have the crc start value is um, this one so this is the start value um, and we loop over this byte string right so in this case this CRC is a word 32. So um, let's say this f function is a word 32 and takes a word, a word 8. So the, the, the accumulator is, is a word 32. The word 8 is the data in from the byte string. And um, um, we will return a word. 32, this will be the output, the accumulator, and then we will have probably cast to, to, to convert this. Um, yeah, so um, we have here this 32-bit this value, then it is masked and then casted to an unsent integer. So we will do the same. So um, the return value is this one, and then in um, red and x f f f f and from integral yeah type next signature lex binding okay so then we have um c r c so this corresponds to this value here and then we have uh this is now called data so data is then every is looped um over every byte in this byte array. So in our case, we call it just byte. 
So um, let's see what we shall do here. So first is the CRC is itself is uh, CRC is shifted eight bits and then the lower bits are masked out. So then we have this value. So let's also do this directly. So let's CRC one. Uh, this is an intermediate value. Um, so it's not good to have the same name. This is the CRC shift left for eight bits. Parenthesize this and then binary end with zero x ff zero zero. So that's easy. Also, we probably want to have this strict. Um, and of course, we now need also the bit operators. So as we had before, we imported the bits. Um, yeah. So next value. Um, then there is a lookup. So this is the XOR operator in C++. And we, this, is the, uh, it, this, this value is XORed with the table table lookup so the array with index the data itself with the crc shifted so ah okay i think this is a little bit more readable so the the index is calculated with this so let's first calculate the index uh, is uh, the crc shift right by 8 bit And XOR, in Haskell we don't have this operator because this is, uh, I think, the potenti potentiation for something. I'm not sure. I think so. And um, XOR, the data, which is in our case byte. So data here is is uh, the value of the, the current value of the array. And for us, this is byte. And this is also from integral, so that we have a word 32. Right? So, and then this is uh, used as an index into this table. So, uh, let's call this table val CRC table. Um, and then we need the index of the vector. So, in C in, in Haskell, is this this is the um, exclamation mark with the uh, uh, qualified with the module name, and um, with the index and most probably this will not compile. Let's see. Uh, okay, I will pass error on. La, 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 la. Oh yeah, so the thing is, let's see if this is the case. Yeah, uh, this is a partial function. Um, it still says pass error. CRC table. Do we have qualified? Yes. Uh, Let's look up real vector. Real vector box partial. Yeah. Okay. Should be. Why doesn't it like it? Should. Just use that one. Okay, before okay, it does take this for whatever reason. Uh, so maybe it comes later the error. Default. Okay, yeah, we have the um, Okay. Well, now it says. Ah, uh, okay. 
couldn't match type in. So yeah, okay, the thing is I was using the backticks. This was the problem. Oh, yeah. And now the index, it, it, uh, this one is um, now um, word32 and we need an int. So uh, this this should ensure that this is always the correct uh, value of between 0 and 255. So uh, hopeful, okay. let's see. Uh, so if we now, yes, um, this compiles, let's this also make a strict. And then we, what we want here is then this first value, this is CRC1, XOR with this table value. So CRC1. XOR, no, XOR with the table value. Does this work? Uh, no, okay, yeah, the table value is, is of course, this is a 16 bit integer. Mm, actually, we can just make this a 32. And then it uses more space, but uh, it will be probably be faster. So it compiles. Well, it's good. Uh, let's also just run this by inlineable calc csc. So that this function is inline because this will be executed for every incoming table frame and this should be fast. So um, we can mark it as inline. So this is then the algorithm trans um, transcribed from C. Um, yeah, so so you see this operation here is a little bit more dense in C++, um, uh, but it's not too bad in Haskell. Yeah, but C++ was uh, uh, inherited this from C, which was uh, explicitly developed with such things in mind. So, um, okay. Uh, next thing is the calc CRC function. So the thing is. Um, Okay, we get the byte string in. We assume that the last two bytes are the CRC value. So we need to get it out first. And so, so we split this, we, we get this byte string and split it, split the last bytes uh, off. So let's say uh, we have um, let uh, the data and the CRC, the bin CRC, the binary CRC. B split byte string split at and a B length BS minus two. Um, the thing is, yeah, let's do this here. C len two. And we had this already in the TM frame, I think. Is this here? Yeah. So we removed it from here. Uh, we have it now in CRC and then of course we need to export it so that we have it available in the team frame. Um, yep, so uh, and of course the byte string we have to pass it. So then we have this the data and the binary CRC. So we, from this 16-bit value we need uh, from this this small byte string, this is the two byte byte string, we need then a 16-bit value, um, a word 16. So uh, I don't want to use parsing again or something like that because as we know this is always two. So what we do is we we get the values out and then manually match them together to a word 16. So uh, let's say this is um, B, uh, no, no, bin CRC. So we take the first byte this we can do this with b index zero and then we do the same with the one the next byte is b index one and uh, probably we should then already convert this to 16 bit from integral um, and then we have um, the the CRC from the from the packet, which should be a word 16. Let's explicitly annotate this. And this one is then B0. Um, shift left by 
8 bits. And we or this with B1. So remember we have a uh, big end in byte order. So um, otherwise you would uh, uh, switch B1 and B0. Yeah, But we, we do it like this. Um, this is big end in and um, so again from the speed manipulation so we take one byte which are now 16 bit values we shift the one up and in the lower half we or this uh, um, the, the, the next byte in this means um, you're setting the bit values from from this byte inside the shifted version here so then you have a 16 bit value which consists of two bytes basically and this is uh, equivalent to the last two bytes in the byte string so we have a word 16. Um, then we need to calculate the CRC. Uh, we need to call calc CRC. So this function we defined here for that. So the part without the CRC, that's important because otherwise you will get the wrong values. And this is then the, let's call it the check CRC. No, this is the calc. Let's call it calculated CRC, and uh, so on the result, the bool is then that the calculated CRC is equal to CRC. Uh, equal. Uh, so, okay, yeah, and then the team frame, of course, we didn't have this missing uh, CRC length. So, um. For now, let's also make this one strict and this one strict. And we also will inline this one, just in case. And then in the TM frame, we have to import CRC. No, yeah, must. Uh, so, okay, for the one thing, now we have calculated the CRC, we can check it. So now we have to check it within the frame. So um, on this conversion here, first we should, um, here we, we, we get directly this NCDU. From this NCDU, we get the binary data and we directly check that, uh, parse that data. So uh, we don't check it before. So let's do that. Um, so, let frame is in CDU data in CDU. So we can remove that and say frame. Um, then um, if um, check CRC the frame. So if, if the check is okay, then we are good and we should this, do this thing here. And if not, then we again we, we put out an error. Uh, CRC error on frame blah blah, and then we tpack show frame something like that. Yep, and. Um, we don't, we can't yield the data. So if, if the, the frame is, is not okay. So what you would do in a real system is um, normally then if you get the data and you will store them in some kind of database. Uh, in this case, you also store all the bad frames because they we can do in with some post-processing, maybe get some data out, even if the frames are distorted or something like that. So there's some kind of data forensics often going on. So for example, if you have seen the Rosetta mission, the very last picture is just half of the picture because the packets uh, were scrambled and were not received uh, the, uh, um, before Rosetta hit the comet. So uh, this is then some post-processing done. And uh, if we don't have a database here you know, for now, uh, we don't have that. Ah, okay, and we have frame. Okay, mm -hmm. frame is in, with a name shader going on. And of course we need to import CRC itself, and uh, then we have this 
dot here again and variable not in scope frame yes okay this is also dot and then it compiles very good um yeah so let's actually try that so this is not a real test but uh, let's let's actually try that so if if we have done uh, all correct then uh, we should not have uh, now a crc error in the when we run the thing so let's run this and also start the server again let's have a look what it does and we get the data and we get no crc error very good um, actually we should probably uh, pipe that output into and start the server uh, and we should have done a tail minus f but anyway so then let's somehow stop this thing so let's see and let's search for csc error and we don't have some so that's the first good indication um, but this is not good enough so um let's what, what i want to do now is something uh which which is very cool in haskell so let's write the test test uh, executable for this a test which compares our uh, function against the original c plus plus function with an, an um, not a quick check with a hedgehog test yeah so basically the thing is this is a property based test so um what you have is you you generate a random byte string and then send it to both to the um, the C, let the C++ version con, con, um, calculate the CRC, let the Haskell version convert, uh, calculate the CRC and then compare the two. This is the idea behind. So uh, we have already this test, uh, my lib test, which was uh, generated automatically. So uh, let's see, this is the test, blah, blah. Here we have it. Um, so we have our main is let's call this crc test or hs we have now base we will need rio we will need hedgehog we will need inline c we will need inline c cpp i think it's called um yo the direct is test crc test so let's re rename this CRC test, right? And um, uh, okay, we need the default extensions, of course. We have we have set for the other things. Da, 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 da. And um, then we will need a uh, maybe no, not maybe we will need an in does it have incrementers? is then we will need um, some uh, some kind of include file so we have this if you remember we have this slice and um, this is in an own header file so we can include this here so um, in test c source let's let's make the redirectory test c source and there we then should copy something uh, let's quickly uh, let me look up if we have forgotten something Ah uh, yeah, so we need of course also the the library, um, so the tutorial telemetry library, because we want to use the the, the functions from there tutorial telemetry library, and um, something we forgot. I think this should be good. Uh, so let's save this. So this will now probably give some problems. Um, yes, of course. Yeah. So import Rio, then we import uh, Hedgehog. Uh, the import is qualified. I don't think. Let's have a look. Um, no, it should be okay. Hedgehog. Um, we will need the Hedgehog the generators. 
Mark Chen again. This is his name. Yes, Chen probably import uh, qualified. Hedgehog range. Um, and um, then we want to have import language c dot inline inline cpp so this is the plus plus code we want to language uh, c inline context don't know if we will use that really uh, we'll have to see and then import language. I don't know if we'll ever use that also. Language C types, but most probably we will use. We will need it. Um, then we need our own import CRC model. So okay. So um, what is this uh, inline C? So so inline C basically lets you write C code directly within Haskell code. So this could look something like that. So uh, you have a quasi quotation and then you can write the inline code. Even you can write a complete block in C. So there's uh, quite a tutorial there. And the thing is what we need is also so you can splice in values from Haskell side. So this N is here a parameter in the Haskell side and it is spliced in here directly in the code. And you can do the same with um, what we need is uh, as we process byte strings uh, there is this splice byte string length and the byte string pointer yeah so um, uh, yeah so this this byte string pointer colon bs bs is the byte string that is passed here this will then return the address to of this array in c um, so basically, we just can can um, what we need is template Haskell and quasi codes. So um, we just copy these extensions here. We will need them. Yes, uh, and then um, this uses a so-called context. Um, this contains some of these these uh, splice functions and so on. So uh, and this, the, the base context is, is just the language itself. And then this is BS context is then the, the context for the byte string. So this BS pointer and BS length. As we used it, we, um, we, we uh, just copy this here. Um, that's the one thing. And then um, um, Basically, we should be good with something like that. So we we will now create a function which then calls the the C plus plus function, which looks like this. Um, it's it's quite similar to what we what we want. So just as an example, I copy this so that we have an, some kind of visual reference, and we commit it out for first, and then we write our function, which is ooh, let's call this C. CRC, C, calc, CRC. So this is the C version, the C++ version of this calc. So this is, we get a byte string, and as we have, uh, as we call, we have to use an IO call and we return a word 16. C calc CRC. So we get the byte string, and uh, what we do is uh, basically the same. So um, we get a quasi quotation is C dot of a C block, and the C block returns um, um, it's a block, a 16 bit value. So an unsigned short in this case, or you could use this uint 16t from C. Um, but it's the same. So um, I just want to keep this. Um, a little bit more on the language level. Um, and uh, what do we do within this block? So uh, basically, um, 
we want to call this function. So we don't have it because um, we haven't. Um, we need to copy the files there. So what I will do now is uh, copy the slice file. Uh, cp uh, from I already cheated a bit. Uh, I tried this before. So um, C source. So we have to slice.hpp file. We copy this to test. Um, test C source. Yes. And uh, we also generate a new file. Let's call it crc.hpp. And I just want to copy again the C++ code from there. So this is the original code, so we don't need this. We don't need this anonymous namespace. And probably we should remove the static for this test. So this is the from the from the namespace and this is the function. So as this is now a header file, I want to inline this function. Um, if you don't know C++, don't care. This is just to get this running. And the thing is, we need this slice here. So is this included? I uh, know. So we will include um, slice.hpp. So then you just have an expression. This. Uh, so what, what we use here is the const slice. Um, and the slice looks, uh, where we have it? This is the const slice. So basically this is just a, a pointer to some kind of, of polymorphic element and then a size. Uh, so it's just a, a few into a buffer if you look like, if you want to. And then you have the, this whole iterator stuff from C++. So it's basically it's just a helper function. But um, we want to keep that so with the slice we can then um, uh, into this buff. So we need to convert this byte string we got into such a slice and then pass it to the C++ function. So um, how do we do that? Well, we um, we are now in C++, so we can write C++ code. So let's we have this util namespace, a const slice with a standard uint 8t. Uh, we will probably need to include some header files from C++. Let's have a look. And this is a slice. And um, to, to pass to the slice, we need a constructor. We have a, a pointer and a size. And this is exactly what we get from the byte string. So uh, we splice this in BS, uh, BS pointer. and the BS length. Right, and then we can call return, uh, call, is it called calc CRC? Calc CRC, yes. So we call that CC++ version of calc CRC with this slice. And then we get um, a C type, most probably. So we want to convert this to word 16. So from integral and we have mapped this into the IO monad. Um, well, this will be funny. So the most funny thing is if you, if you now get then uh, error messages from the GCC C++ compiler within Haskell. So if you haven't done that, do that. It's really funny. And um, so, um, uh, do we need? Yes. Um, so this will probably not compile. Okay. So the procedural line is not near. Let's make this quick and dirty for now. So util is undeclared. So um, 
of course, we need to include this file so that the, 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 the C++ uh, environment is happy. So you can do this with this includes uh, thing and uh, slice.hpp. And um, also uh, this crc.hpp. So we include these both files that we have here defined here. And if we have specified the directory correctly, the include dears uh, test c source, then maybe fatal iterator could not find such a slice HPP. Uh, okay, uh, HPP does include iterator. Yes, um, do we? Ah, yeah. I see. So we use the C context, but we actually we need to use the CPP context. Uh, the CPP context is uh, the C++ context, so the base context is the, the context of the C library. So now it, uh, it can't find the standard libraries. Uh, okay, very good. So we have a different error found in a nested name specifier expected to run through. Um, 43. Ah, yeah, we need a double colon, of course. Yeah. Yes. Next error. Invalid conversion from char to const unsent char in. Um, yeah, so the point that we pass is a character pointer, but C++ expects the const unsigned character pointer. So in this case, this cast is actually valid, though not pretty, so C++ people will probably hate this, uh, and they are right, but um, in this case, this is, uh, this is a valid cast, I can ensure you. And whoa, we compile. Of course, now we have a crash because we have we've, we've undefined here. So, but this thing compiles. So it compiles the C code, it compiles the the C plus plus code, it compiles the Haskell code, links them together, and then call can we can now call this. So let's remove this reminder here. So we have now the C function. So let's define a, a property uh, for the property test for Hedgehog. Um, let's see. Um, this should be pretty easy. Let's call this prop check CRC. Yes, and this is a property uh, property. Yes, um, and we create this property property of the function. And so first, we need to generate a byte string to pass to these both functions. So we can generate a byte string. With um, so you can look up this in the in the hedgehog documentation. I don't want to go to, too deep into this. So for all of them, then with the generators uh, bytes, um, we generate a byte string with the constant or linear. I think let's try it with this. Right. So um, we generate a byte string in the in the uh, between one and uh, one byte and 65, 64 kilobytes um, should be enough for our purposes. And then we call the C, C click. We call the function with this byte string. So this C calc CRC with this byte string. And we have to call this, since we are in a property, also we have to we, we have to lift this. Um, the IO function because this is an IO function, so we have to lift this in the context of the property, and uh, then we want to calculate our Haskell check, and this one is calc CRC of the byte string, right? And then we want to check that the Haskell check. And this triple equal is then the, the test operator for, for Hedgehog. C check. Right. And then in main, uh, main 
now for hedgehog creatures returns bull and then we can just um uh, we don't need to check parallel, but we can do it like this and then discover. Did discover this? This is also some template Haskell magic. This discovers all properties that are in this file and then calls them one by one. So uh, I'm actually, well, if this now runs, I'm surprised, but maybe. Whoa, it compiles and it runs, and you see the tests, tests. Yeah, it runs through. And we have them. So it generated 100 tests, 100 byte strings, random byte strings, calculated the, the, the CRC on the C++ side and on the Haskell side, compared them, and for these tests all, went, all, all was good. Sorry, I just hit the microphone. Um, all was good. So uh, basically we can now be quite confident that the CRC function we wrote or we translated from C++ is correct. So that's really great. So if it's great, we should stop here and um, see you then in the next video.